Hey, what is up? We are outside of an Ollie's right now. That's a discounted liquidation grocery store chain, mostly in the Midwest and East Coast, but there's places like this all around the country, and we're buying things like this, Nair Wax Bikini Pro Kit. Not because I need to use it, but because I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it online, and I'm going to make money off of this, and I'm going to show you how to do the exact same process. And after the video, another entrepreneur, not me, someone you're going to like probably, is going to show you what they think is the most important tip for all new resellers, entrepreneurs, really anyone trying to make a name for themselves. So stick around for that. It's going to be great. Quick thing, uh, I will be watching the footage from the store on my computer and commenting on it. That's going to be the, the, the side video. Previously, I had kind of shaky, like, dollar store or uh, inside the store footage as the, the other, you know, video you're watching. Uh, but this time, I'll be side by side telling you what I'm thinking and seeing. Let me know in the comments how you like it. I might do it more like this. That's an Ollie's, much like uh, any other discount grocery store chain you might have in your area. These are in the Midwest. I've seen them as far south as Florida. I've seen them on the East Coast as well. Uh, they're mostly though like Pennsylvania to Michigan. What they do is they're buying liquidation stuff. They're buying truckloads of items from other stores, from Amazon, who knows where it is. And then they're selling it in their store. Just getting right in here, the first thing I have is some deodorant. It's called Wolfthorn. That's like the scent. Uh, it's a, a Old Spice deodorant. It's their Spice Wild collection. Sales rank is 254, or sorry, 245. Uh, but it's selling for 30 bucks new for a two-pack. That's crazy, and we're paying six dollars for them. If you look at the sales rank, uh, you know, not the not the best in the world, but a quarter million in beauty. That's still gonna sell a few a month. Uh, I wouldn't clear out the shelves on this, but I would buy it. This next is a Aussie Volume. It's a hair product. The, actually, on that time, the barcode from Ali scanned first, so I had to scan the second barcode. We see a bunch of options here. Uh, the one that I chose is going to be the 13 and a half ounce, and that's just because it's what it is. When you see these, oftentimes there's going to be a kind of variation amongst, um, you know, the the sizing. Not so much here. I just went back and checked, and it's it's 13 and a half ounces for all of them. But if there's like a trial size and a family size, you want to make sure that you're selling the correct size. This one again profitable. Uh, the sales rank shows it's selling a few a month. It was selling a lot more back in March. I'm not sure why it, it, it trailed off. It could be the product is just merely discontinued. Uh, so it's no longer being sought after in stores. The next one, again, more hair products. We're focusing on hygiene products today. That's like the theme of the video. You can sell anything. It doesn't have to be uh, hygiene products. It can be bricks. It could be, you know, um, toy guns, anything. This one, again, uh, the profit is a uh, $7.70, so I put in my buy cost of $4. $3.70 is what the net profit is on top of that. And it looks like over the past month, about two have sold, and that's only how long the, the listing's been alive for. That that flat line you saw was, was not, that means nothing was listed. Here's a big winner, and the reason I like this, and I actually ended up buying you know all of them right here, is because it's, uh, it's such a low sales rank. It's Nair Hair Remover, Bikini Pro Kit, whatever, and the profit on this is only 507, you know, before feet, before my costs. After the cost of the product, uh, the profit is actually the same as what I paid for it, 2 249, which makes me think that it might be someone else buying and reselling. I'm not totally sure. And when I say the profit, that includes all of the fees, the FBA fees, the inbound shipping fees, everything. The app I'm using, uh, Profit Bandit, does all that work for you and says, okay. This is how much you're getting paid from Amazon. You know, obviously there's taxes and that kind of stuff, but if I'm buying 100 of them and I'm making 249 a piece, just think of it as one bulk buy uh, and the profit is, is, you know, 100 times 249. Back to what I'm doing though. So again, here, more shampoo. This one is profitable. Uh, at the price we're, we're buying it, uh, it's making money. There is a, another one though. So there was this like age-defying one. And then there's this uh, in, intense smooth shampoo. It says zero or 20 sellers, so a lot of people are selling it. But what's crazy is even though they're essentially the same product, same almost same packaging, just a different marketing scheme, um, one's profitable, 
and one is not. Just scanning more items. Uh, I've never heard of these Dermend Alpha and Beta Hydroxy Moisturizing Glycolic Acid Skin Lotion. But uh, I can scan the barcode, and if I can scan the barcode, I want to check it up. Uh, this one right here, again, not very profitable. 31 cents is what you're making. Absolutely not worth it. This ha heavier item right here, I scanned this to show you that I, you know, how I don't think it's making money. Um, and it's the issue is, is with heavy products, the shipping costs so much more. The way FBA does it, that for like a nine dollar item, you're losing almost all your money on shipping. And so, what happens here while you're seeing a different product go up for the barcode is because this product is not being sold on Amazon. It's just not profitable to ship it, you know, via USPS or whatever they do. And so someone took a hose coupler and used the barcode. This is like against the terms and conditions of Amazon. Used the barcode to make their own listing. So when I scanned it, that popped up. That's just a red flag for so many reasons. I put it back, obviously, besides it being too heavy and not profitable. It's a bad idea. Uh, okay, more of these, more Dove shampoos. What we're looking for is like discontinued products, products that are no longer on the shelves, uh, in main stores, because what I was getting at earlier is these liquidation type palettes, they might not be bad products. They might just be okay. Pantene or Dove wants to do a new cycle of products in their, uh, in their retail marketing scheme, whatever it is, and they don't want to cannibalize sales for product C because product A and B's, and I'm using that because of the, you know, implication of a chronological order, uh, are not performing as, as well as they should. And so they sell them in bulk to someone like Ollie's or any number of places, not, not just Ollie's. And then they sell them uh, to consumers. Why doesn't Ollie's sell on Amazon? I honestly couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I assume it has to do because they're making a bunch of money with this current model. And if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. But, uh, but they do, that's how it goes. Back to the products though. Um, again, what we're looking at, when I swipe over to the right, what I'm showing you is the sales rank. And every time the sales rank dips, that means the product sold. Uh, why else would the sales rank dip? You know, it's kind of like a, a deductin. It's a, a deduction, not a deductin. It's not a word. Mucinex, so the reason I scanned these is because people are gonna say, what about over-the-counter products? Like Mucinex is medicine, and so a lot of people are going to have this idea in their head that uh, you can't sell medicine. If it's over the counter, that's a certain category restriction you have to go through. But yes, I can sell that on Amazon. I have a, a more mature account than most people do, so I can sell more things than the average seller. But if you work through the process and just try to list things and apply for new categories, you can sell all this stuff. These Unisom mini tabs right here, this is the kind of thing I, I try to look for because it's a weird, like someone who would need mini tabs in a 20 pack? I don't know, someone who it's too much for, you know, in the regular dosage. It's a weird thing that I couldn't figure out why they have it, and so I want to look it up to see if, okay, if, if it's a niche product, that's more likely for it to, uh, that means it's more likely that it's going to be one that we can flip for a profit. But it ended up being that, again, like the uh, heavy coconut hair product, nothing shows up. So for the Unisom ones, no one had listed those. Could I make a listing and try and sell it? Potentially, it depends what kind of brand restrictions Unisom has. I don't know those off the top of my head, so I left them on the shelf. Thanks for watching. You know, please subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff, and watch the clip after the video. It's a friend of mine, friend of the channel, someone who will give you advice on how to make money, and uh, who doesn't need that? Who doesn't want good advice? See you guys later. Subscribe, comment, don't be a shithead. Bye. Thank you, Blake, for having me on the channel. And what I want to talk about for new entrepreneurs is toxic comparison. When you're comparing yourself to somebody else and it brings you down, you don't really know the whole picture. Maybe they're on step five and you're on step one or two. Comparing yourself to somebody else that's technically more successful or has more subscribers or has more money can be absolutely toxic to your mentality. Blake has bigger biceps than me. That's okay. We're different people. But if I have bigger biceps than I did last year, I'm still a success. I'm growing, moving towards the goal that I'm trying to achieve. Compare yourself to yourself in the past rather than somebody else in the present, and it'll keep your mind straight. It's important. Thank you.